This is the continuation of my reading of Ask Me, 100 Essential Poems by William Stafford. With Kit, age seven, at the beach, we would climb the highest dune, from there to gaze and come down. The ocean was performing, we contributed our climb. Waves leapfrogged and came straight out of the storm. What should our gaze mean? Kit waited for me to decide. Standing on such a hill, what would you tell your child? That was an absolute vista. Those waves raced far and cold. How far could you swim, Daddy, in such a storm? As far as was needed, I said. And as I talked, I swam. Passing remark. In scenery, I like flat country. In life, I don't like much to happen. In personalities, I like mild, colorless people. And in colors, I prefer gray and brown. My wife, a vivid girl from the mountains, says, Then why did you choose me? Mildly, I lower my brown eyes. There are so many things admirable people do not understand. Once in the forties. We were alone one night on a long road in Montana. This was in winter, a big night, far to the stars. We had hitched, my wife and I, and left our ride at a crossing to go on. Tired and cold but brave, we trudged along. This, we said, was our life, watched over, allowed to go where we wanted. We said we'd come back sometime when we got rich. We'd leave the others and find a night like this, whatever we had to give, and no matter how far, to be so happy again. One home Mine was a Midwest home. You can keep your world. Plain black hats rode the thoughts that made our code. We sang hymns in the house. The roof was near God. The light bulb that hung in the pantry made a wan light, but we could read by it the names of preserves. Outside, the buffalo grass and the wind in the night. A wildcat sprang at Grandpa on the 4th of July when he was cutting plum bushes for fuel, before Indians pulled the west over the edge of the sky. To anyone who looked at us, we said, my friend. Liking the cut of a thought, we could say, hello. But plain black hats rode the thoughts that made our code. The sun was over our town. It was like a blade. Kicking cottonwood leaves, we ran toward storms. Wherever we looked, the land would hold us up. Prairie Town There was a river near First and Main, a salt mines honeycombed farther down. A wealth of sun and wind ever so strong converged on that hometown, long gone. At the north edge there were the sand hills. I used to stare for hours at prairie dogs, which had their town, and folded their little paws to stare beyond their fence where I was. River rolling in secret, salt mines with care, holding your crystals in stillness, north prairie. What kind of trip can I make, with what old friend, ever to find a town so widely rich again? Pioneers for whom history was walking through dead grass, and the main things that happened were miles and the time of day. You built that town, and I have let it pass. Little folded paws, judge me, I came away. Ceremony On the third finger of my left hand, under the bank of the Nenesca, a muskrat whirled and bit to the bone. The mangled hand made the water red. That was something the ocean would remember. 
I saw me in the current flowing through the land, rolling, touching roots, the world incarnadined, and the river richer by a kind of marriage. While in the woods an owl started quavering with drops like tears, I raised my arm. Under the bank a muskrat was trembling with meaning my hand would wear forever. In that river my blood flowed on. The Farm on the Great Plains A telephone line goes cold. Birds tread it wherever it goes. A farm back of a great plain tugs an end of the line. I call that farm every year, ringing it, listening still. No one is home at the farm. The line gives only a hum. Some year I will ring the line on a night at last the right one, and with an eye tapered for braille from the phone on the wall, I will see the tenant who waits, the last one left at the place. Through the dark my braille eye will lovingly touch his face. Hello, is mother at home? No one is home today. But father, he should be there. No one, no one is here. But you, are you the one? Then the line will be gone, because both ends will be home. No space, no birds, no farm. Myself will be the plain, wise as winter is gray, pure as cold posts go, pacing toward what I know. One evening, on a frozen pond a mile north of Liberal, Almost sixty years ago I skated wild circles while a strange pale sun went down. A scattering of dry brown reeds cluttered the ice at one end of the pond, and a fitful breeze ghosted little surface eddies of snow. No house was in sight, no tree, only the arched wide surface of the earth, holding the pond and me under the sky. I would go home, confront all my years, the tangled events to come, and never know more than I did that evening, waving my arms in the lemon-colored light. In the Oregon Country From old Fort Walla Walla and the Klickitats to Umpqua near Port Orford, stinking fish tribes massacred our founders, the thieving whites. Chief Rotten Belly slew them at a feast. Kamiakin riled the snakes and yakamas, all spurted arrows through the cascades west. Those tribes became debris on their own lands. Captain Jack's wide face above the rope, his Modoc women dead with twitching hands. The last and the most splendid, Nez Perce Chief Joseph, fluttering eagles through Idaho, dashing his pony-killing getaway. They got him, repeating rifles bored at his head, and in one fell look Chief Joseph saw the game out of that spiral mirror all explode. Back of the northwest map their country goes, mountains yielding and hiding fold on fold, gorged with yew trees that were good for bows. At the Klamath Berry Festival. The war chief danced the old way, the eagle wing he held before his mouth, and when he turned the boom boom stopped. He took two steps. A sociologist was there. The scout troop danced. I envied him the places where he had not been. The boom began again. Outside he heard the stick game and the Blackfoot gamblers arguing at poker under lanterns, still moccasined and bashful, holding the eagle wing before his mouth, listening and listening, he danced after others stopped. He took two steps, the boom caught up, the mountains rose, the still deep river slid but never broke its quiet. I looked back when I left, he took two steps, he took two steps, 
past the sociologist. Looking for gold. A flavor like wild honey begins when you cross the river. On a sandbar, sunlight stretches out its limbs. Or is it a sycamore, so brazen, so clean and bold? You forget about gold. You stare, and a flavor is rising all the time from the trees. Back from the river, over by a thick forest, you feel the tide of wild honey flooding your plans, flooding the hours till they waver forward looking back. They can't return. That river divides more than two sides of your life. The only way is farther, breathing that country, becoming wise in its flavor, a native of the sun. An Oregon Message When we first moved here, pulled the trees in around us, curled our backs to the wind, no one had ever hit the moon. No one. Now our trees are safer than the stars, and only other people's neglect is our precious and abiding shell, pierced by meteors, radar, and the telephone. From our snug place we shout religiously for attention, in order to hide. Only silence or evasion will bring dangerous notice, the hovering hawk of the state, or the sudden quiet stare and fatal estimate of an alerted neighbor. This message we smuggle out in its plain cover to be opened quietly. Friends everywhere, we are alive. Those moon rockets have missed millions of secret places. Best wishes. Burn this. Earth Dweller. It was all the clods at once become precious. It was the barn and the shed the windmill, my hands, the crack Arley made in the axe handle. Oh, let me stay here humbly, forgotten, to rejoice in it all. Let the sun casually rise and set. If I have not found the right place, teach me. For somewhere inside, the clods are vaulted mansions. Lines through the barn sing for the saints forever. The shed and the windmill rear so glorious the sun shudders like a gong. Now I know why people worship, carry around magic emblems, wake up talking dreams they teach to their children. The world speaks. The world speaks everything to us. It is our only friend. Spirit of Place, Great Blue Heron out of their loneliness for each other, two reeds, or maybe two shadows, lurch forward and become suddenly a life lifted from dawn or the rain. It is the wilderness come back again, a lagoon with our city reflected in its eye. We live by faith in such presences. It is a test for us, that thin but real, undulating figure that promises if you keep faith, I will exist at the edge, where your vision joins the sunlight and the rain, heads in the light, feet that go down in the mud where the truth is. The Fish Counter at Bonneville Downstream they have killed the river and built a dam. By that power they wire to hear a light. A turbine strides high poles to spit its flame at the flume going down. A spot glows white where an old man looks on at the ghosts of the game in the flickering twilight. Deep, dumb shapes that glide. So many Chinook souls. So many silver side. Witness. This is the hand I dipped in the Missouri, above Council Bluffs, and found the springs. All through the days of my life I escort this hand. Where would the Missouri find a kinder friend? On top of Fort Rock in the sun I spread these fingers to hold the world in the wind. Along that cliff, in that old cave where men used to live, 
I grubbed in the dirt for those cool springs again. Summits in the Rockies received this diplomat. Brush that concealed the lost children yielded them to this hand. Even on the last morning when we all tremble and lose, I will reach carefully, eagerly through that rain at the end, toward whatever is there with this loyal hand. Bifocal Sometimes up out of this land a legend begins to move. Is it a coming near of something under love? Love is of the earth only, a surface, a map of roads, leading wherever go miles or little brushes nod. Not so the legend under, fixed, inexorable, deep as the darkest mine the thick rocks won't tell. As fire burns the leaf, and out of the green appears the vein in the center line, and the legend veins under there, so the world happens twice, once what we see it as, second it legends itself deep the way it is. Across Kansas My family slept those level miles, but like a bell run deep till dawn, I drove down an aisle of sound. Nothing real but in the bell, past the town where I was born. Once you cross a land like that, you own your face more. What the light struck told itself. Every rock denied all the rest of the world. We stopped at Sharon Springs and ate. My state still dark, my dream too long to tell. Malheur before dawn. An owl sound wandered along the road with me. I didn't hear it. I breathed it into my ears. Little ones at first, the stars retired, leaving little polished circles on the sky for a while. Then the sun began to shout from below the horizon. Throngs of birds campaigned, their music a tent of sound. From across a pond, out of the mist, one drake made a V and said its name. Some vast animal of air began to rouse from the reeds and lean outward. Frogs discovered their national anthem again. I didn't know a ditch could hold so much joy. So magic a time it was that I was both brave and afraid. Some day like this might save the world. Starting with little things. Love the earth like a mole, fur near. Near-sighted, hold close the clods, their fine print headlines. Pat them with soft hands. But spades, but pink and loving, they break rock, nudge giants aside, affable plow. Fields are to touch, each day nuzzle your way. Tomorrow, the world. Mr. Conscience, the meditative crane with angular zigzag brain thinks, what kind of world am I wading in? Wait, stock fish. Where does the me begin? Step, flash the thin thinker, swish to kill. Wades on, the answer in his bill. The Well Rising the well rising without sound, the spring on a hillside, the plowshare bringing through deep ground, everywhere in the field, the sharp swallows in their swerve, flaring and hesitating, hunting for the final curve, coming closer and closer, the swallow heart from wingbeat to wingbeat, counseling decision, decision, thunderous examples. I place my feet with care in such a world. Climbing along the river. Willows never forget how it feels to be young. Do you remember where you came from? Gravel remembers. Even the upper end of the river believes in the ocean. Exactly at midnight, yesterday sighs away. 
what I believe is, all animals have one soul. Over the land they love, they crisscross forever. Roll Call Red Wolf came and Passenger Pigeon, the Dodo Bird, all the gone were endangered, came and crowded around in a circle. The bison, the Irish elk, waited silent. The great white bear, fluid and strong, sliding from the sea, streaming and creeping in the gathering darkness, nose down, bowing to earth its tapered head, where the black-footed ferret, paws folded, stood in the center, surveying the multitude, and spoke for us all. Dearly beloved, it said. The things I learned last week. Ants, when they meet each other, usually pass on the right. Sometimes you can open a sticky door with your elbow. A man in Boston has dedicated himself to telling about injustice. For $3,000, he will come to your town and tell you about it. Schopenhauer was a pessimist, but he played the flute. Yeats, Pound, and Eliot saw art as growing from other art. They studied that. If I ever die, I'd like it to be in the evening. That way I'll have all the dark to go with me, and no one will see how I begin to hobble along. In the Pentagon, one person's job is to take pins out of towns, hills, and fields, and then save the pins for later. Ode to Garlic Sudden it comes for you, in the cave of yourself where you know and are lifted by important events. Say you are dining and it happens. Soaring like an eagle, you are pierced by a message from the midst of life. Memory, what holds the days together, touches your tongue. It is from deep in the earth, and it reaches out kindly, saying, Hello, old friend. It makes us alike, all offspring of powerful forces, part of one great embrace of democracy, united across every boundary. You walk out generously giving it back in a graceful wave what you've been given. Like a child again, you breathe on the world and it shines. Reading with Little Sister, A Recollection The stars have died overhead in their great cold. Beneath us the sled whispers along. Back there our mother is gone. They tell us, if you hold on, the dogs will take you home, and they tell us never to cry. We'll die too, they say, if we are ever afraid. All night we hold on, the stars go down, we are never afraid. Just thinking. Got up on a cool morning, leaned out a window, no cloud, no wind. Air that flowers held for a while, some dove somewhere. Been on probation most of my life, and the rest of my life been condemned. So these moments count for a lot. Peace, you know. Let the bucket of memory down into the well. Bring it up. Cool, cool minutes. No one stirring, no plans, just being there. This is what the whole thing is about. Any morning, just lying on the couch and being happy, only humming a little the quiet sound in the head. Trouble is busy elsewhere at the moment. It has so much to do in the world. People who might judge are mostly asleep. They can't monitor you all the time, and sometimes they forget. When dawn flows over the hedge, you can get up and act busy. Little corners like this, pieces of heaven left lying around, can be picked up and saved. People won't even see that you have them. They are so light and easy to hide. Later in the day, you can act like the others. You can shake your head. You can frown. 
first grade. In the play, Amy didn't want to be anybody, so she managed the curtain. Sharon wanted to be Amy, but Sam wouldn't let anybody be anybody else. He said it was wrong. All right, Steve said, I'll be me, but I don't like it. So Amy was Amy, and we didn't have the play, and Sharon cried. Freedom Freedom is not following a river. Freedom is following a river, though, if you want to. It is deciding now by what happens now. It is knowing that luck makes a difference. No leader is free, no follower is free. The rest of us can often be free. Most of the world are living by creeds too odd, chancy, and habit-forming to be worth arguing about by reason. If you are oppressed, wake up about four in the morning. Most places, you can usually be free some of the time if you wake up before other people. When I met my muse, I glanced at her and took my glasses off. They were still singing. They buzzed like a locust on the coffee table and then ceased. Her voice belled forth, and the sunlight bent. I felt the ceiling arch and knew that nails up there took a new grip on whatever they touched. I am your own way of looking at things, she said. When you allow me to live with you, every glance at the world around you will be a sort of salvation. And I took her hand. You and Art your exact errors make a music that nobody hears. Your straying feet find the great dance walking alone. And you live on a world where stumbling always leads home. Year after year fits over your face. When there was youth, your talent was youth. Later, you find your way by touch where moss redeems the stone. And you discover where music begins before it makes any sound. Far in the mountains where canyons go, still as the always falling, ever new flakes of snow. The Animal That Drank Up Sound 1. One day across the lake, where echoes come now, an animal that needed sound came down. He gazed enormously, and instead of making any, he took away from sound. The lake and all the land went dumb. A fish that jumped went back like a knife, and the water died. In all the wilderness around, he drained the rustle from the leaves into the mountainside, and folded a quilt over the rocks, getting ready to store everything the place had known. He buried thousands of autumns deep, the noise that used to come there. Then that animal wandered on and began to drink the sound out of all the valleys, the croak of toads, and all the shiny little noise grass blades make. He drank till winter, and then looked out one night at the stilled places guaranteed around by frozen peaks, and held in the shallow pools of starlight. It was finally tall and still, and he stopped on the highest ridge, just where the cold sky fell away like a perpetual curve, and from there he walked on silently and began to starve. When the moon drifted over the night, the whole world lay just like the moon, shining back that still silver, and the moon saw its own animal dead on the snow its dark, absorbent paws and quiet muzzle, and thick, velvet, deep fur. 2. After the animal that drank sound died, the world lay still and cold for months, and the moon yearned and explored, letting its dead light float down the west walls of canyons, and then climbed its delighted, soundless way up the east side. The moon owned the earth its animal had faithfully explored. 
the sun disregarded the life it used to to warm. But on the north side of a mountain, deep in some rocks, a cricket slept. It had been hiding when that animal passed, and as spring came again, this cricket waited, afraid to crawl out into the heavy stillness. Think how deep the cricket felt, lost there in such a silence. The grass, the leaves, the water. The stilled animals all depending on such a little thing. But softly it tried, cricket, and back like a river from that one act flowed the kind of world we know, first whisperings, then moves in the grass and leaves, the water splashed and a big night bird screamed. It all returned, our precious world with its life and sound where sometimes loud over the hill the moon, wild again, looks for its animal to roam, still down out of the hills any time. But somewhere a cricket waits. It listens now and practices at night. Keeping a Journal At night it was easy for me with my little candle, to sit late recording what happened that day. Sometimes rain breathing in from the dark would begin softly across the roof and then drum wildly for attention. The candle flame would hunger after each wafting of air. My pen inscribed thin shadows that leaned forward and hurried their lines along the wall. More important than what was recorded, these evenings deep into my life. They framed every event or thought, and placed it with care by the others. As time went on, that scribbled wall, even if it stayed blank, became where everything recognized itself, and passed into meaning. Indian Caves in the Dry Country There are some canyons we might use again sometime. Burning a book, protecting each other, right in the center, a few pages glow a long time. The cover goes first, then outer leaves curling away, then spine and a scattering. Truth, brittle and faint, burns easily, its fire as hot as the fire lies make, flame doesn't care. You can usually find a few charred words in the ashes. And some books ought to burn, trying for character but just faking it. More disturbing than book ashes are whole libraries that no one got around to writing. Desolate towns, miles of unthought-in cities, and the terrorized countryside where wild dogs own anything that moves. If a book isn't written, no one needs to burn it. Ignorance can dance in the absence of fire. So I've burned books, and there are many I haven't even written, and nobody has. Growing up, one of my wings beat faster. I couldn't help it, the one away from the light. It hurt to be told all the time how I loved that terrible flame. A Farewell, Age 10 while its owner looks away, I touch the rabbit. Its long, soft ears fold back under my hand. Miles of yellow wheat bend. Their leaves rustle away and wait for the sun and wind. This day belongs to my uncle. This is his farm. We have stopped on our journey. When my father says to, we will go on, leaving this paradise, leaving the family place. We have my father's job. Like him, I will be strong all of my life. We are men. If we squint our eyes in the sun, we will see far. I'm ready. It's good, this resolve. But I will never pet the rabbit again. Artist, come home. Remember how bright it is, the old rabbit bush by the hall light? One of the blackberry vines has reached all the way to the clothesline. 
There isn't any way to keep the kitchen window from tapping. The tea kettle had one of its meditative spells yesterday. I am thinking again of that old plan. Breakfast first, then the newspaper. They say maybe they won't have that big war this year after all. A frog is living under the back step. An archival print. God snaps your picture. Don't look away. This room right now, your face tilted exactly as it is before you can think or control it. Go ahead. Let it betray all the secret emergencies and still hold that partial disguise you call your character. Even your lip, they say, the way it curves or doesn't, or can't decide, will deliver bales of evidence. The camera, wide open, stands ready. The exposure is thirty-five years or so. After that, you have become whatever the veneer is, all the way through. Now you want to explain. Your mother was a certain, how to express it? Influence, yes. And your father, whatever he was, you couldn't change that, no. And your town, of course, had its limits. Go on, keep talking. Hold it, don't move. That's you forever. Why I am a poet. My father's gravestone said, I knew it was time. Our house was alive, it moved, it had a song. The singers back home all stood in rows along the railroad line. When the wind came along the track, every neighbor sang. In the last house, I followed the wind. It left the world and went on. We knew, the wind and I, that space ahead of us, the world like an empty room, I looked back where the sky came down. Some days no train would come. Some birds didn't have a song. Run before dawn. Most mornings I get away, slip out the door before light, set forth on the dim gray road, letting my feet find a cadence that softly carries me on. Nobody is up. All alone my journey begins. Some days it's escape. The city is burning behind me. Cars have stalled in their tracks. And everybody is fleeing like me, but some other direction. My stride is for life. A far place. Other days it is hunting. Maybe some game will cross my path and my stride will follow for hours, matching all turns. My breathing has caught the right beat for endurance. Familiar trance-like scenes glide by, and sometimes it's a dream of motion, streetlights coming near, passing, shadows that lean before me, lengthened then fading, and a sound from a tree, a soul, or an owl. These journeys are quiet. They mark my days with adventure too precious for anyone else to share, little gems of darkness, the world going by, and my breath and the road. The last class. They crowd near. If you look at them, they look down. Pause. They shuffle their feet. Over near the windows along one side, patches of light shine on the floor. It is almost the hour to begin whatever comes after this day. Over their heads you see so many clouds and stars and days. A hook begins to come down from the sky. If you call out, if you warn them, what good will that do? It is the long moment that always opens at such times. Now the eyes turn away. A new high-pitched hum has compelled the others to look around. What happens next? You look towards the exit. This isn't your place anymore. It was coming. Now it is here, the call. Not for them. For you. It is for you. Looking across the river, we were driving the river road. It was at night. There's the island, someone said, and we all looked across at the light where the hermit lived. I'd be afraid to live there. It was Ken, the driver, who spoke. 
He shivered and let us feel the fear that made him shake. Over to that dark island my thought had already crossed. I felt the side of the house and the night wind unwilling to rest. For the first time in all my life I became someone else. It was dark. Others were going their way. The river and I kept ours. We came on home that night. The road led us on. Everything we said was louder. It was hollow and sounded dark like a bridge. Somewhere I had lost someone, so dear or so great or so fine that I never cared again, as if time dimmed and color and sound were gone. Come for me now, world. Whatever is near, come close. I have been over the water and lived there all alone. Father and Son, no sound, a spell, on, on out where the wind went, our kite sent back its thrill along the string that sagged but sang and said, I'm here, I'm here, till broke somewhere, gone years ago, but sailed forever clear of earth. I hold, whatever tugs the other end, I hold that string. Choosing a dog. It's love, they say. You touch the right one and a whole half of the universe wakes up, a new half. Some people never find that half, or they neglect it or trade it for money or success and it dies. The faces of big dogs tell over the years that size is a burden. You enjoy it for a while, but then maintenance gets to you. When I get old, I think I'll keep not a little dog, but a serious dog, for the casual drop-in criminal. My kind of dog, unimpressed by dress or manner, just knowing what's really there by the smell. Your good dogs, some things that they hear they don't really want you to know. It's too grim or ethereal. And sometimes when they look in the fire, they see time going on and someone alone, but they don't say anything. Are you Mr. William Stafford? Are you Mr. William Stafford? Yes, but, well, it was yesterday. Sunlight used to follow my hand. And that's when the strange siren-like sound flooded over the horizon and rushed through the streets of our town. That's when sunlight came from behind a rock and began to follow my hand. It's for the best, my mother said. Nothing can ever be wrong for anyone truly good. So later the sun settled back and the sound faded and was gone. All along the streets every house waited, white blue, gray. Trees were still trying to arch as far as they could. You can't tell when strange things with meaning will happen. I'm still here writing it down just the way it was. You don't have to prove anything, my mother said. Just be ready for what God sends. I listened and put my hand out in the sun again. It was all easy. Well, it was yesterday, and the sun came, why, it came. Smoke. Smoke's ways a good way, find or be rebuffed and gone. A day and a day, the whole world home. Smoke? Into the mountains, I guess, a long time ago. Once here, yes, everywhere. Say anything? No. I saw smoke. Slow traveler, reluctant but sure, hesitant sometimes, yes, because that's the way things are. Smoke never doubts, though. Some new move will appear. Wherever you are, there is another door.